want to call to order the regularly scheduled meeting of the Murfreesboro Community Unit District 186 for December 15th of 2020. And Mrs. Hines, will you call the roll, please? Mr. Bain? Here. Mr. Beavers? Here. Dr. Doerr? Here. Mr. Green? Here. Mrs. Jane? Here. Mrs. Evaldi? Here. Mr. Rundy? Here, and for those who are watching remotely, I do want to make aware that we have three people who are normally here who are remote as well for various reasons. So, uh, the first order of business tonight is we need to swear in a new member to the board, Mr. Kevin Bain. So, if you'll repeat after me. I, Kevin Bain, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Member of Board of Education of Murfreesboro Community Unit District 186 in accordance with the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Illinois, and the laws of the State of Illinois to the best of my ability. Go ahead and repeat that. Go ahead. I, Kevin Bain, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Member of the Board of Education of Murfreesboro Community Unit School District 186 in accordance with the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Illinois, and the laws of the State of Illinois to the best of my ability. I further swear that I shall respect taxpayers' interests by serving as a faithful protector of the school district's assets. I shall encourage and respect the free expression of opinion by my fellow board members and others who seek a hearing before the board while respecting the privacy of students and employees. I further swear that I shall respect taxpayer interests by serving as a faithful protector of the school district's assets. I shall encourage and respect the free expression of opinion by my fellow board members and others who seek a hearing before the board while respecting the privacy of students and employees. I shall recognize that a board member has no legal authority as an individual and that decisions can be made only by a majority vote at a public board meeting. I shall abide by majority decisions of the board while retaining the right to seek changes in such decisions through ethical and constructive channels. I shall recognize that a board member has no legal authority as an individual and that decisions can be made only by a majority vote at a public board meeting. I shall abide by majority decisions of the board while retaining the right to seek changes in such decisions through ethical and constructive channels. As part of the Board of Education, I shall accept the responsibility for my role in the equitable and quality education of every student in the school district. I shall foster with the board extensive participation of the community, formulate goals, define outcomes, and set the course for Murfreesboro Unit District 186. As part of the Board of Education, I shall accept the responsibility for my role in the equitable and quality education of every student in the school district. I shall foster with the Board's ex extensive participation of the community, formulate goals, define outcomes, and set the course for Murfreesboro Community Unit District 186. I shall... <laughs> I shall assist in, a, <laughs> in establishing a structure and an environment designed to ensure all students have the opportunity to attain their maximum potential through a sound organizational framework. I shall strive to ensure a continuous assessment of student achievement in all conditions affecting the education of our children in compliance with state law. I shall serve as education's key advocate on behalf of students and our community schools to advance the vision for Community Unit District 186. I shall assist in establishing a structure and environment designed to ensure all students have the opportunity to obtain their maximum potential through a sound organizational framework. I shall strive to ensure a continuous assessment of student achievement in all conditions affecting the education of our children in compliance with state law. I shall serve as education's key advocate and on behalf of students and our community, our community school to advance the vision of Murfreesboro Community Unit School District 186. 
I shall strive to work together with the district superintendent to lead the school district toward fulfilling the vision the board has created, fostering excellence for every student in the areas of academic skills, knowledge, citizenship, and personal development. I shall achieve to work together with the district superintendent to lead the school district towards fulfilling the vision the board has created, fostering excellence in every student in the area of academic skills, knowledge, citizenship, and personal development. Mr. Bain, welcome, welcome back to the board for, I think, your third time. Thank you. And we certainly appreciate you uh, accepting our invitation to do that. And don't sit down. It's time for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> and we're going to let you lead it. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. I got tickled on the dog. <laughs> I don't know if it's dog. All right, the next is the approval Sorry. of... <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knew until you just said something. Uh, the next item is the approval of the agenda. Dr. Evers, are there any additions or changes to the agenda? No, just some specifics regarding um, some FOIA requests. So, okay. you know, January those. Then I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda. Same Second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next item is the approval of the consent agenda, which includes District 186 regular board meeting minutes dated November 17, 2020. Tri-County minutes dated November the 18th of 2020. Tri-County bills for December 2020 applications and reports. I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number seven is the District 186 bills for December. Are there any questions from the board? And if you have a question, please let us know which section you're in. It's either one of eight or one of two. I have a question. I have a question. One of eight. Thank you. And Paige? Yeah. The Chromebooks for St. Andrews and Emmanuel that are purchased through the CARES grant, are we just a flow through or how did that work? Yes, we, um, we actually have a set aside required by the federal government for our, both our CARES grants and our title grants for our parochial school students um, with, with those two schools being in our, in our boundaries. So um, we have to set aside part of that money for the CARES grant in this case. And um, we do the ordering, purchase orders, and get, get the equipment or whatever they, they need for those two schools. And then um, we get the reimbursement, of course, for those federal grants. So that's a, that's a mandate that we have on all of those grants. And just, just for clarification, Mrs. Bush, I had asked you that same question. Um, and I had also asked you when that started, and you said that was going on before you that's right here. yeah it's, it's something that's always happened that, you know for the last 19 years I know that was news to me yeah do you do we have to do all the footwork or uh, do they do the ordering and everything or, and they just, they'll they'll submit the purchase orders or, or tell us what they want and then we we do the ordering but based on their allocation like we sat down with mr. Grody myself mr. Carrington miss Bush in late May, early June to like discuss their, their how they wanted to spend their the percent like their the part. So we're so we're not making unilateral decisions. So if they wanted to use it on all PPE and cleaning supplies, that that would have been their prerogative. So they, they were able to say with what we're given we want to purchase X number O and tell us how they wanted it to be utilized before they the purchase order process. So this is of all we asked that question today, too. So there's at least one well, that question. Yeah. It, it stands out. Yeah, yeah, don't you? Yeah, there was at least four people who, who, who saw that. And yeah. And we've had some things, you know, through through the um, bills in, in the past couple of years, but they were a lot smaller in, in amounts. So th this did just kind of jump out. I agree. Anyone else? Then I will entertain a motion to approve the District 186 bills for December. So moved. And a second? I'll second. Mrs. Hines? Okay, who, who, can somebody tell me who made the first? Mrs. Eovaldi and Mr. Bain. Thank you so much. Mrs. Eovaldi? Yes. Mr. Bain? Yes. Mr. Beavers? Yes. 
Dr. Doerr? Yes. Mr. Green? Yes. Mrs. James? Yes. Mr. Ruckey? Yes, motion carries. Item number eight is communications. We do have one. That's oh, good. no, that's, that's fishbowl. She's got three that Mrs. Okay. Hines will read. Mrs. Hines, you're up. Okay, bear with me. The first one's from Jessica White. Dear Dr. Evers, Mr. Keener, Mr. Ellemeyer, and Murphy Sproul, CUSD 186 Board of Education. I'm excited to share the news that my husband and I are expecting our first child. My doctor has confirmed my pregnancy and the estimated due date of February the 7th, 2021. I am requesting a minimum of seven weeks after delivery, pending my condition and when my doctor releases me. Please let me know if you require confirmation from the New Horizons Obstetrics and Gynecology Medical Group, and I will request they forward the letter. My intention is to begin leave on Monday, February the 8th, and return Monday, April the 5th. I will apply my unused sick days against any time my doctor finds me to be disabled and unable to teach as a result of the pregnancy. My family feels truly blessed, and we are so happy to be sharing this experience with the administrators, faculty, staff, and students. Thank you for your support. I, the administration um, recommends the approval of her leave. Entertain a motion to accept that recommendation. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We wish her the best. I saw her last night. So excited. Yeah. Okay, the second one is from Kristen Raymond. Dr. Evers, I'm requesting a short-term maternity leave in 2021. I am due March 15th, which would begin the leave the week we return from spring break. I would like to be on leave until April 26, 2021, which is six school weeks. I was informed that I need to be board approved. My building MHS administration is aware. Please let me know of any other items that I need to complete in order to receive board approval. The administration recommends the approval of this leave. Now I'll entertain a motion to accept that recommendation. Mm -hmm. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries, and we wish her the best as well, too. Okay, dear Mr. Keener, please accept this was from Warren King. Mr. Keener, please accept this letter as my formal resignation from the school nurse position at MMS, effective 30 days from today, November the 18th, 2020. I have appreciated the opportunities for growth and development you have provided during my time here. Thank you for your guidance and support. Please let me know how I can be of help during this transition period. I wish you and your school the best of luck moving forward. Warren King. The administration or recommends the approval of this request. And I'll entertain a motion to accept that recommendation. So moved. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And, and it should be noted that that position will be absorbed. We have five nurses in four buildings. So um, Charlene Malore will be uh, assuming that position at the middle school. That helps. It does. Okay, that was it, Mrs. Hines? Yes, that was it. All right, next item is fishbowl items, and I see the fishbowl, so we got some. Just one. Okay. Dear Board of Education, Murfreesboro Middle School teacher Sharon Fry has earned her National Board Certification. National Board Certification is considered the highest credential in education and is a huge accomplishment for an educator. The students of our district are sure to reap the rewards of Ms. Fry's hard work and dedication. Sincerely, Darlene. Young. Congratulations to Mrs. Fry. That's it's a huge accomplishment. Yeah. And during a pandemic, to have to do all those those milestones in such a unique experience, I mean, that, Absolutely. That's, tr that's tremendous. And I, I can tell you that there's been more than one occasion where I have followed her from classroom to classroom because she's just captivating. So um, congratulations. And I'm certain if I enjoy um, what she teaches as much as her her students, then we are well served. Yep, absolutely. Okay, uh, item number 10 is Freedom of Information Act, and I believe there was two that were placed uh, with the board members at their seats we did, ahead we did, of time. We did have two. We had one that just came in Friday morning after the board packets went out from Smart Procure, and this is one that we get regularly, we get it. Yeah. and they get it all across the state for purchase order information from September 14th to current, and that's already been provided. And the second one was um, information about the board um, terms, emails, um, name, term, start date, term, end date, salary. I, I posted all your Lunch. salaries, by the way and um, email addresses were requested. So that information was provided today as well. Okay. 
Item 11 is the recognition of the audience. The Board of Education welcomes the audience to make public or employee comments. The Board has set aside time in the agenda specifically for this purpose. Pursuant to Board Policy 2.230, each speaker shall be limited to a five-minute presentation. Please be aware that while this is the time for the public to express its opinions and or concerns, the Board may or may not comment regarding public presentations. If a matter of public comment warrants discussion or action of the Board of Education, such discussion or action will be added to the agenda of a future meeting. Dr. Evers or Steve, did we get anything from the public or employees? No, and, and MEA is participating remotely tonight, too. So oh, thank you for reminding I, I, me of that. Yeah, so, so we're pretty much alone. I think, did you say Ms. Vanky came? And she's, yeah, she's, she's participating from across the hallway. Okay. All right. Move into old business. The first item is the financial and COVID updates. Dr. Evers. I will, I'll do my COVID and then you want to jump in there? Yes. Um, I know that I gave you COVID numbers last Thursday in our, our weekly note, but um, today at uh, approximately 5 o'clock, we had tested 168 individuals. We've had five positive students, two positive faculty or staff members, and then three auxiliary peripheral people. Those are positive coaches, board members, um, Tri-County, McElvain, SIU, those type of people who would not necessarily have direct contact with students in the school system. So separated it those ways <clears throat> to, to kind of give you a clear picture. Um, so of the 168, 158 have been negative, 10 have been positive. We're doing nasal, nasal swabs for anyone who's symptomatic. Um, we can offer that. Um, curbside so that we can prevent people coming in. So when people do come in, we bring them quickly to the office, get them swabbed, and and what we found with positive results is usually you wait for the full 15 minutes, but that bottom line is the positivity line, and it typically shows positive within 30 seconds to a minute, and, and then the control line will will show you know to to show that it's a valid test within that window, but the positive line shows very very quickly. So it it you know, it's not 100%, but the science is, this is the second generation by next rapid testing. So when you Google, you know, make sure if you do any Googling that you look at second generation testing. But it shows um, if, if the incubation from exposure time is long enough, it has uh, fairly reliable accuracy in the 90th percentile for accuracy between 90 and 97%. Those negatives that are, are early negatives sometimes can become positive if you're tested too soon. And so that those happen with PCR as well as, as rapid testing. So we always encourage people if they, they remain, if they have a symptom and it comes back negative, to consider coming back if your symptoms persist in two to three days. We've also had several staff members who are doing it as a weekly screening. One who asked today, emailed and said, hey, can I do it three times a week? We are 100% open. That is part of the nature of this study. They want to look at large and small school systems throughout the state who, who allow screening for staff members and employees uh, they, and also for symptomatic students. So we encourage it. You know, if you're, if you're feeling off or you're, you just want to have peace of mind, you know, one or two times a week that, that you and your children, you know, have reasonable assurance that you're safe or safer. I mean, it's a pandemic. We can't, we can't under you know, value what is going on in the community. So do we have limitless test? They told me when we, we were we were given 2,000, that's what I asked for on that initial batch. Most of our schools um, are on their second box, so they're doing test kits 40 to 80. So all of the schools, with the exception of the high school, has asked, I'm sorry, only the two elementaries have asked for the next two boxes. So they have, you know, the next 80 handed out to them. Um, so I'm, I'm just trying to do it two boxes at a time so that we can kind of keep track of the sure. inventory and keep them secure. Um, the middle school and the high school has not have not asked for their next AD, but um, the two elementary schools are in their second box, well into their second box of testing. So they're somewhere probably between 60 and 75 tests in. So yeah, Great. it's going well. I mean, 168 tests. So I think when I sent to you on Thursday, there were 140. So since Thursday, I did it at the end of the day Thursday and then the end of the day today. So. And it's just students and employees. Like, if there's a student that tests positive, do you, and they have a sibling at another school, does, do you have that sibling go get tested, or do you offer the test to the parents so they know if they need to all be? Like, how does that work? 
Or you just send them home, I mean. Well, we'll, we'll send them home with the recommendation that all of the students can be tested and we recommend for affirmative testing for the family because otherwise, and, and it works, I mean, they're gonna either have to quarantine or isolate depending on whether they're positive or a close contact. So it, we always encourage, we'll test whole fam, like we'll test all the siblings that are school aged, you know. And really we've done it even for the McElvain Center because so many of the students are uh, the employees, even though they're not our direct employees, they work for SIU, they work for Tri-County, and they work for SIU Head Start. They serve mostly Mercy, Murfreesboro students, and so we've been, when, been, when they need it, they, they come and they get it, and we, we provide them in the results. That's why I put it in the third column, because they're not directly our employees, but I want to make sure, where, wherever it is, if it's an office, a classroom, a boardroom, we want it to feel like it's the safest place that we can have, space that we can have during this time of our lives, you know. We, it was pretty reassuring we started to see the first round of vaccination, so maybe we're turning a corner. I at least know that out of, I just wanted to kind of, and I know you guys have heard it, we're one of six, but out of the big picture, there's, there's 879 schools that they could have chosen from. And they chose, they wanted to choose between five and 10 on the first round, they chose six. And so we're, you know, in the, you know, first percent off. Dr. Evers, correct me if I'm wrong, sure. but I believe you have also said this is opened up to the board members because we do convene. Right, and this is a space where, let's be honest, our, our typical meeting time is, even though we're socially distanced, it's a sick, it's, it's an airborne, you know, disease, and we want, or condition, and we don't want anyone to feel like they could be in a situation where they could be bringing some, something to the Board of Education, so. I went and had one today because of oh, the meeting tonight. Mm -hmm. I woke up by, you know, and felt congested and went and had one. Good. Good. It was negative. I mean, honestly. <laughs> what's the process? What's the process? Oh, no, you were positive here, right? How, how did you feel about the process itself? Oh, it was fine. Yeah. I mean, I went I went to the high school, um, but she was at Crothers, so I just went to Crothers, and, I, and um, the high school called and told them I was on my way. I had already had the form filled out, and I just went in, took it, and went back to my car, and... Um, waited for her to tell me what the results. So the form only has to be signed once unless you use a different site. So let's say that a second second shift employee comes to me and then they later, you know, catch the nurse at the gym. The, she, we all keep track of our forms in our offices. So if I do someone, but, but if Ms. Dory used the same nurse each time, what she'll do on the form with the permission slip is it's, a, it's good for the remainder of the school year. And so that goes for the students too. Each time a, a student gets tested, even if their parents sign the form, we do recall and say, hey, we have your child in the office. You know, if she has a symptom or she has a symptom, would you like them to be rapid tested? Because we know that they're going to have to go home if they don't. Um, and, and the parents have that, that option to test. Many times they and the parents have asked, and so we just use the process. And so I'll put the date, and the, you know, on all of all of our forms, we'll put the date and um, and the result for that that date. So if we have a person who goes 25 times on the back sheet, it will just say date, date, and, and result, so we know. Well, thank you for doing that, and I didn't realize that we already had somebody take us up on something. That's and great. And all positive, net negative, and indeterminates are recorded in the red cap system and the red cap system is a universal idph program so that perry county can see jackson county is like anyone who like if we had an employee last week we tested someone who lived outside of our county they could still see the results by contacting jackson county and said you know we have an employee at this building who is positive they don't live in the county they said don't worry they can, we can give them the id and they will be able to see it right in red cap and so REDCap is the database that all IDPH centers, whether it's health departments, SIH, uh, any of the testing places. If, if SIU does a test for athletes, they're gonna, their nurses will record it in REDCap. So it's a universal process. So they see everything. And even the indeterminates, when we had one where a control line didn't visibly show, you just re-swap and make sure that you get, get, get a, an affirmative positive or negative. So it's been a good process. Thank you. Question. Sure. Do you 
Do you uh, let the county know every time you test or only if it comes up positive? It is recorded in Binex now. They don't want to be overwhelmed with fax, faxes or scan files. So they want, they have an additional form that they ask for any positive. They want to be called as well as they have a, a one page form that they want to be sent even if it's someone who does not reside in, reside in Jackson County. So they have an additional process. But what they'll look at, they look at our, and, and our database is shared with the, myself, the, the four nurses, and two people at, I, at, at Jackson County Health Department. So they can see real time who we test during the day, but they get the IDPH, they get essentially three different options to see our results, but they only want an additional piece of paper filled out for positives. Because that gives, that is the piece of paper they give to a source tracer to start checking for close contacts. So, yes, good question. Thank you. All right, Mrs. Bush, you got financial. Yes, I just have a couple things. I um, just wanted to let the board know that um, our bonds have been sold, and we should have the money on Tuesday, the twenty second, in the bank. So uh, I have a. a account set up for that money to be invested and um, we should see that coming in on Tuesday that 3.3 million and 3.2 I'm losing it I'm pretty tired um, and the, the second thing is we did get our second or our third property tax payment um, last week I think on Thursday so we are about 92.8 uh, percent collected um, of of what we um, extended this year, which is, is pretty good this time of year. So we will receive one more small, just as straggler payments, and not until February of property taxes. So that's the, um, I thought was good news. I wasn't expecting yeah, exactly. a check last week. So we had a $2.6 million check on Thursday. So um, still our um, evidence-based funding still rolling. And, um, you know, so far, there, there's no discussion that we're going to be prorated this year. Um, crossing my fingers and hoping that that's going to be the case. Thank um, you. With the uh, possible pending spring cuts to budget, how, what's, do you, what have you heard about our cuts so far? Um, I'm hearing that w w the, the cuts, you know, we, I think we all think that something will happen, that that won't happen this fiscal year, that will happen for next fiscal year, and I'm hearing as deep as 10%. Right. That's huge. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's huge for us. You know, you're looking at um, more than a million dollars um, in evidence-based funding for us. So, so the, it's 10% for that, K-12 also? I'm hearing that number. I don't know that that's what they will really do. I, th I think they're trying to scare everyone, um, and then we will be thrilled when we get a cut less than that. <laughs> Did she say ten percent? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And that's that's just I mean that's just hearsay at this point. That's been you know some of the players in Springfield um, they're hearing those numbers and that's floating around the capital. I'm going to make the assumption in care that you're hearing at the secondary level too. Mm -hmm. okay. We've we've heard that at the superintendent level at the IASA the potential cuts up to potentially ten percent. So. Okay. That's why, like I said, you know, in what meeting two meetings ago, we'll look at <clears throat> when every position, when we have departures, but whatever categories they are in, you know, we'll we'll look at whether or not there's a need to to replace. And, and this most recent one with the resignation of the school nurse, we we were able to still meet the needs um, of our, our nursing and our, our holistic needs with the floor. And then that's why, you know, with the rapid testing. I'm a backup person. Terry Hines is a backup to the backup person. Um, she went through the training and the in servicing to do that. So, so that we have some beyond the four buildings if anyone has to have an absence. And we also have just taken um, an application of a sub nurse. So that will be nice if anyone has a planned absence or we have someone who has close contact or something that they would have to be out for an extended period. We'll have, have options, but we won't have to fill that as a, a full-time position. So that's a, a savings of a FT, you know, a one full-time equivalency. So salary and benefits, that's a pretty good, pretty good help yeah. in that, in that direction. So we'll, we'll continue to look at small course corrections. So we'll do that. Perfect. All right, next item is the approval of the 2020 tax levy, which is enclosure number one. 
the, the board did approve at the November 17th board meeting the resolution regarding estimated amounts necessary to be levied for the for 2020 and um, the amount of that was eight million ninety two thousand four hundred twenty two dollars and that that number is still the same um, for all of the the various funds and that represents a four point four point nine five percent increase over the property taxes that were extended in 2019 and it would be the administration's recommendation for board approval for the 2020 tax levy as presented. Any questions? I'll entertain a motion to approve the 2020 tax levy as presented. So moved. Second? I'll second. Mrs. Hines? Mr. Beavers? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Bain? Yes. Dr. Gore? Yes. Mr. Green? Yes. Mrs. James? Yes. Mrs. Evaldi? Yes. Mr. Ruffey? Yes. Motion carries. Move into new business. The first item is the 2020-2021 seniority list, which is enclosure number two in your packet, and this is information only. So that will be posted until... When? January. 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 Gotcha. January morning. Okay, any questions from the board? Next item is the press policy update number 106. Ms. Hines has provided you with an electronic link. It's 160 pages. <laughs> On my initial first read, it does not look like significant substantive changes. But again, um, that was my first read. So if you are reading and you have any questions, please just get it to me by... 3 p.m. if you can on the night before the board meeting, so on that Monday, so that I can do a deep dig so we're not coming through 160 pages because, you know, it's one thing when it's eight pages of board bills, it's a whole, or of uh, financial bills, it's a whole different thing when you have 160 pages of, of press. So if you have anything that, that you see as um, uh, substantive in the changes to um, press policy, those will be on review till next month. And then, like I said, they're pretty expansive this, this time around with minor tweaks and revisions. Okay. Very good. We have a need to go into closed session? Briefly, yes. Very briefly. I make a motion to go into closed session pursuant to Section 2 of the Open Meetings Act 5, Illinois Compiled Statutes 120 2 c to review the appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees of the district including hearing testimony on a complaint lodged against an employee to determine its validity. And a second? Second. Mrs. Hines? Can you tell me who the second was? Mrs. Eovaldi. Thank you. Mr. Beavers? Yes. Mr. Eovaldi? Yes. Mr. Green? Yes. Mrs. James? Yes. Mr. Brent, or Mr. Bain? Yes. Dr. Doerr? Yes. Mr. Rutney? Yes, motion carries. 